Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. You know what I'm gonna to try to do? You've got questions, so many of you, and wonderful statements and comments. How about a weekly update on what's going on with the hummingbirds? So let's start off with today is an overcast day. I don't think we're supposed to have any rain. And I'm looking out my kitchen window where I grow a lot of different plants. And this is where I have a lot of my hummingbird feeders. I even got one there, which needs to be filled. And that's what I'm in the middle of doing right now. Right now, I've noticed more and more hummingbirds are coming to the feeders. Like moments ago, and I think I missed the moment, there were literally hundreds and hundreds all over in one spot. They're foraging right now out in the gardens, and then they're coming in for food. I have flowers here, and I'm planning on doing a lot more flowers. I know a lot of you have told me that you saw the last of your hummingbirds the other day. In the south, east coast, they are migrating. And what they're doing is they're heading south. They left up north, which is gonna be cold, and they're heading south because that is where there's gonna be flowers and abundance of food, including people that put out a lot of hummingbird feeders, like me. Now, out my kitchen window here, I generally have about eight to 12 feeders. It depends on how many I hang. I've put multiple hangers up there, so if it rains, I can get some under the eaves or extra ones, and then I've got covers on some of mine. Now, I know a lot of you are sad, but you know, this is nature, this is what they do because they have to find an abundance of food because really, if they don't feed enough in one day, let's just say they don't wake up the next day. And they know in certain areas, it's just too cold and there won't be enough flowers, which gives them nectar and pollen. And even a lot of insects will be hard to find in a lot of areas. So here I give out as much food as needed. In other words, if they keep coming in, I keep putting out more. And if there's an abundance of birds where I see that all the seats are taken, I immediately add in more feeders, not more food, because adding in a bigger feeder doesn't give them more food. It just gives them more time to feed at one feeder. So these feeders hold about eight ounces of food. And this way, I can have more seats because seats are important. If you can see here out the window, and excuse my window, it is dirty. I do the best I can because they're flying all over and throwing a lot of soot around. A lot of these feeders have 10 to almost 20 seats if I've made extra holes. The Walmart feeder has a lot of holes in it and you would think it's too many, but let me tell you something. As long as they know there's enough food for them, they won't fight. Keep that in mind. Each feeder is a plant to them and a flower. So if you've got your feeders, let's put it, let's back up for a minute. If you have feeders really close to each other, like those two are fairly close out there. They consider that a plant with a bunch of flowers on it and they may try to protect it. If you've got a few birds, you can offer more feeders than birds. But what I have to do here is I have to offer more seats than birds. This way everybody can find a seat and that is what keeps the peace. Because I've got them here, I've got them on my deck, different feeders around the house here as well as in the gardens. And as long as they know they're not gonna run out, that really does help on fighting. Now, as you can see, not all the feeders are full. That's Zoe playing with a toy. If you hear squeaking, it's not a hummingbird. Zoe's my little Yorkie. So anyways, I'm feeding right now, it could be, it could change daily. It depends if they're staying here or moving anywhere between two to four gallons a day. And that's homemade nectar. And that's a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water. It's a ratio, but it's also a formula. And I know I've explained this in a lot of videos, but the sugar becomes part of the water. So it is, it, it's a scientific, chemistry incorporation where if you put a quarter of a cup of sugar in one cup of water it pretty much stays one cup if you go back and remeasure it fluid volume so that's why i say just add in a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and then on top of that top it with one cup of water now make sure you do stir it really well and it's well dissolved if it's not well dissolved then they're not getting the right ratio at that point because you'll have particles of sugar floating around like I said, I have a lot of videos on how to make hummingbird formula because I add in warm water first and then I top it with the rest with cold water. 
And then when I'm in a hurry, I even do it differently, where I start to make up the sugar, add in very warm water, top with ice, and then top with cold water. So there's a lot of different methods of doing that. I know so many of you are sad that they're leaving, but that's what they do. And think of it this way. Try to enjoy the holiday season. Know they're doing what they're supposed to do. And after the holiday season, you can start to think about how you want to set up the feeders. Maybe you want to separate them. Maybe you want to put blinders. And I've got videos on that where, in other words, you can put two feeders together with a separation, a divider, so they can't see each other on either side if you're having issues. But kind of think like a hummingbird if you can. Look at them and understand what they're doing. One hummingbird who has to feed on a certain amount of food is trying to protect his plant because if somebody takes over his plant and he doesn't have enough, he will perish and that's why they do it. So if you can separate your feeders or put blinders up there where they can't see, think of a horse that they put sometimes blinders on as they're going a carriage horse down the street so they don't get upset by cars or other things around them. Well, you could do that with feeders and I have done that. But if you can get them to understand that there's more than enough food then that's how you can stop a lot of the quarreling. And it works. I mean, you can see this is proof it works. Now, as you can see, in the few minutes I have spoken, the numbers have gone down just now. There's a little Rufus sitting right in front of us. And occasionally they will chase another one off, especially another male Rufus. But as you see, their numbers have kind of dwindled back down because now they're gonna go into the garden. A hummingbird comes in one hummingbird you will feed it could take him anywhere from five seconds and i love how they sit and relax and enjoy themselves just think of it you go into a restaurant sit at a bar and have a nice little drink well that's what they're doing they could sit there for 30 seconds sometimes even longer if they're resting and then take off and they will be gone for a good 15 minutes because they've got enough fuel in them to keep them going and then forage for flowers and insects around the yard because they're also looking for pollen. They need all three of that. That gives them their vitamins and nutrients that they need. The sugar water is part of it, that's nectar. And this ratio was developed. And this is why a quarter of a cup of white granulated sugar and one cup of water, which is sucrose and water, makes the same ratio as nectar found in a flower. This is not my invention. This has been developed and researched. So that's why you don't add anything else, no marmalade, no jam, no honey, because honey grows a bacteria that will end their life, just sugar. And, that will, and the white sugar only because brown sugar has molasses and that won't work well for them either. So I hope I've given you kind of an insight on what's going on here. A lot of them will live here throughout the year. I will probably be putting out all winter more feeders, especially when it rains, they even come in more because they can't find the pollen that they need. So I'm ready and willing to do this. And then come late winter into spring, they start to think about leaving because they have a long travel, a voyage all the way up north. Some of them go as far as Alaska. So when you think, how are they going to get back to the East Coast? Believe you me, they know the calling and they look at this, they're looking in the window at me and they know what they need to do. It's amazing what nature has put into these birds considering that dad does nothing but breed with a female, mom builds the nest, sits on the eggs all by herself and raises the babies all by herself. And once they're weaned, they're off on their own because usually she goes back to nest. So this is all in their DNA. This is all nature telling them what to do. So with that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And if you can subscribe, because it really does help my channel. And this has just been a joy of ours. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day.